Well, the upper left-hand corner says November 19th through the 22nd. So with Flight 6 in the record books, it's time for another episode of Starbase Radio. Kicking it off with some crews inspecting the chopsticks out there after the flight. Not going to see any flight footage in this one, actually. (laughs) But you are going to see SpaceX continuing work to get ready for Flight 7. Just the OLM there over the launch mount is not looking too bad seen a lot of inspections and checkouts seemingly go on. A little bit of scorching. Gets a little battle damage. Just looks like that X-Wing you had when you were a kid that you put the battle damage stickers on, but then you had to put them over the, the regular stickers and you couldn't take the battle damage off if you wanted the new X-Wing again. So, anyways, on the booster, quick disconnect there. You can see they've got that sort of temporarily covered up. Doesn't look like the normal covers they put on it, but uh, are they just checking it out? Are they going to have some stuff to repair or replace? We're going to keep watching what's going on. Now, interestingly, that clip looked like it might have been stabilized on the the boom arm or something because the OLM looked like it was moving, but clearly it wasn't. That's not a thing. Mary headed out there and got all of the OLM from all of these different angles. So if you'd like to inspect what's going on, a lot of great footage from Mary out there. There's sort of the angled view of the back of the chopsticks. Again, folks going around, looks like taking uh, pictures up on the top, it seems. Good way to check things out and upload those over. We're going to bring up a bin filled with scaffolding to the top of the launch mount again and start putting some scaffolding in place. Means they're going to be there for a little while doing what they're going to do here on the OLM. Every time we see the little dozers, doozers, what were they that had the little sticks that the guys like to eat? Fraggles, whatever. Um, (laughs) Anyways, you saw we see the doozers putting up the the scaffolding there. We know they've got a little bit of work to do. There's that shot of the ship QD arm. You can see the plate sort of tucked back behind there. And there is the damaged mast. Mary really taking a lot of good close-up shots of the current state of the tower. Some questions as to whether or not that damaged mast had something to do with the aborted catch. Got hit by the uh, blast of the rocket passing it leaned over, maybe broke some stuff off of it, but uh, the information we saw from SpaceX was that it was due to a loss of communication with the tower systems. And so did that mast have anything to do with communication to or from the tower systems? You wouldn't think so. If it was me, I would probably mount my communication dishes to the main side of the tower where they're totally shielded and can point back towards the, uh, the mission control. You don't need to put them up on the mast. The tower's already tall enough. But was there something else critical up there? Not exactly sure. Here's the thing for Ship 26. I don't know what side you're on if you're on the Ship 26 fan club and you like to make fan videos and songs about it. Or if you don't really, you know, have a lot of care for Ship 26. Whatever side you're on, the ultimate fate here is that uh, Ship 26 was cut to pieces and moved over to the scrapyard a couple sections at a time. So maybe they're just going to refurbish it and put it back together and fly it to the moon as part of the HLS program. Probably not, but we'll see. (laughs) You see the dance floor raising up. You see the little scaffolding thing there just rose up. It's not really scaffolding. It was just some framework. And then the cables carry it up. So they can work under the OLM. And then we see the OLM alignment pins that help the uh, boosters align themselves when they are stacked in the OLM. We know they're not entirely necessary. They just make things potentially faster, easier, or more efficient when they have them in. Here we've got some booster press pipes being lifted. They've got actually some uh, extra pieces on them for structural integrity while they move them around. They got those verticated there. Checking back in with that pad B OLM. Haven't seen any big pieces come and go. We think all the big pieces came in, as I mentioned in a previous video. But they have put them all together now. There's the chopsticks, the carriage, and the cutie arm. 
all of these pieces being assembled back at the assembly yard for the second tower. Won't it be a thing when they have two operational towers at Starbase? I want that. I, I, I'm going to go down there and see the double stack. Sounds like a burger you'd order at the drive through but it's rockets. It's two massive rockets on two different pads at the same time. That will be a thing to see. Back over behind the high bay and mega bays, some drilling happening sort of between the bays and the parking garage. It will be interesting to see what gets put in there. You can see pieces. I mean, the rem remnants of Ship 26 there in the high bay. Here, it's a little easier to see if you cut it off and you uh, take it out. <laughs> Ship 26, that said mix lock section. You know something? Maybe that's going to get corrected to say mid lock section. We'll see if the editors work their magic. Maybe I'll have to try to remember to tell them about that. No stopping the commentary, though. We're going to keep going. <laughs> Ship 26 wiggling around a little bit there because it's connected to that big crane. We see more and more pieces be added, being added to this, but it's, it's really curious why this is taking so long. <laughs> nice. The <laughs> zoom in on the work between the office building and the uh, factory, and then we back off to the OLM again. Wouldn't be a Starbase video if we didn't have a tile that says work on the OLM continues. If you didn't know, that stands for orbital launch mount. I wonder, maybe not everybody knows. Here you can actually see people standing on the dance floor. Just their feet, I mean, not dancing around there, but kind of, as they work on the uh, areas of the OLM that would normally just have ground, <laughs> what, 30, 40 feet below them. Just makes it easier and safer to work on the thing without having to stick a bunch of lifts up under the middle of it. Also, I mean, here we're reinforcing some things. We're doing some welds. Did they see some welds that cracked due to the force of liftoff? Are they adding new pieces? Not entirely sure on the context there. But crawling all over the OLM like ants. There's the pivot point. That looks like the bottom part of the pivot of the chopsticks. You can tell because the angle on the right-hand side goes up, right? Got a worker here crawling around on the top. Let's see if we can discern what they're doing. They're having a chat. That one is riding it like a pony. Apparently that's a legitimate way to sit on the chopsticks <laughs> if you're strapped in correctly. Much smaller than a booster. Maybe they were just posing for a photo. It really does look like they're doing some detailed inspections on stuff. Speaking of detailed inspections, there's the ship cutie arm. Up there you can see the shiny part with all the circles on the right that connects to the ship, and then the plate that tries to protect it on the left. Here's ship 26 again. <laughs> we just keep jumping back to the scrapping of ship 26. Max capturing this one. Not going to have Max and uh, D out there for much longer. I know they're going to head on back to the Cape to cover things there, but uh, looks like they were... All in for the scrapping of Ship 26 as it uh, meets its fate at the shiny plasma end of a cutting torch. Quick peek inside the Mega Bay 2. This is the one you look straight up the uh, grand walkway there. Hey, some crane parts. Look at this. We just saw them take a big crane away, and they are bringing big crane parts back in. I wonder, I, I wonder why. I wonder if they just have that first crane for X amount of time, then it was scheduled to be somewhere else, so now they need to swap it to this other crane. I really wonder, like, how that crane scheduling works. I, I don't know the answer. If you know how to schedule a crane, let me know down in the comments. I've never had the reason nor the funding to order a crane like this. I rented a 30-foot lift from Home Depot once, and that's about all I got. And that was tough, actually. Let me tell you. At least I didn't have to assemble it when I got there. We just towed it over there with a the truck and then put the little outriggers down and then raised it up and strapped in and worked on the tower some. So it was much less uh, erector set than the crane requires. But anyways, we'll be seeing what goes on with that. Which means we first get to see them build the crane. <laughs> it's like... 
powered up and rotating around already. All right, turn around so you can put this part on this side. It is really cool the way they put this together. Going to have to hop down there and put some big pins in, I bet. I think we had a matching piece for the other side. Got some nice attach points there. Designed so that they're right there on the center of mass, right? You assemble these cranes everywhere they go. So they've got it set up so with a, uh, like a simple rigging there, they can actually pick it up right there on the center of mass. It's not waggling around all over. And there you have. Doesn't look like a crane yet. It's missing some very craney, craney pieces here. Well, that'll help. Let's add that to it. Now I need like, it's like some big spools or winches they're putting in there. Now, I wonder if the rest of the crane was together, I bet you we could see. Look at that. Is that for the main winch system or is this for like raising up the weights they put on the back? That's actually really cool. I'd love to see like one video that's the entire time lapse of just that crane being assembled. Speaking of assembling things, this looks like massive draw work spools for Tower 2. I'm going to keep it forward, kick it forward just a little bit here. There's a ship thrust simulator hanging out. You can see there where the rams sort of push on the engine load points for the ship. Mary Poppins making an appearance. It's okay. I can't even say that with a straight face. Yeah, they're in the shade. It's hot. Whatever. Actually, the weather was actually really nice out there. It was a good time to be outside working the last couple of days after that front came through. Not only did the front give us some beautifully clear weather for launch, a fantastic afternoon launch there, uh, also cooled things down a little bit. I feel like these things are just posing here. Are they in storage? They're not working on the building. Got the cool X logo there, but uh, they just got them out of the way. Mary came over here to the launch site. They reinstalled all those, all those little grady... Uh, fence things. They brought all those back over there. I guess they thought the launch was going to blow them over or something. Work continues on the subcoolers. We saw them carry over there quite a while ago. I, like, wow, I almost want to go back and see how far along that was. Let's take another shot of the chopsticks. I, they really don't look like they're in very bad condition. Sure, they didn't catch a booster that time, but in terms of launch, they, they don't look too terrible. Honestly. And that's part of the whole deal, right? being able to rapidly reuse these things. But, you know the drill. My name's John. Some people call me Doss. Heck, my mom even calls me Doss. Thanks to Mary and Max and Starbase Live Ops for being out there. Thomas edited this one. <laughs> Appreciate y'all hanging out. Click the little sub button, thumbs up, whatever. If you want to make it back, we do two of these a week. We do all sorts of other stuff, but for now, we will see you nerds later. Thanks for hanging out.